So welcome everyone to my next tutorial. It's been a while. I'm going to walk you through my approach to create a nature scene. Keep in mind this tutorial might not be ideal for beginners since I won't explain every step in detail. And I also use a few add-ons through the process, but I'll mention three alternatives as we go. And the additional programs I use are available for free with some limitations and there are alternative options out there as well. For my basic setup, I start by positioning a camera and setting the resolution to ultra wide. I'll also switch the lens to something wider, around 34 millimeters will do. After that, I'll add a plane to serve as the ground surface and scale it up to about 100 meters. I start by opening my reference image, which is from Aaron Westwood, so I can easily check it as I work. Next, I'll reposition my camera to match the angle and the perspective of the reference. Once that's set up, I'll begin with the sculpting process. I'll switch over to Do Not Topo mode and set the detail size to around 6. Now I can start shaping and painting the environment. While sculpting, I'll add a cube to serve as a human reference. This gives me a rough idea of the scale. As you can see, I also use trees as additional reference points. Through the sculpting process, I'll keep comparing my scene in the camera view with Aaron's reference image to ensure everything aligns. Once I roughly shaped the environment, I'll add a simple plane to represent the water level. This helps me draw the details that uh, reflects the real world settings more accurately. After finishing the sculpting, I added another plane to create some background mountains. I will include the height map I used in the video description for you. And if you can't see everything clearly in the viewport, you can just adjust uh, the clipping distance in the view tab. You may also need to apply the settings to the camera as well, like shown. Here I make uh, a few adjustments based on the reference image, trying to capture the basic elements. Of course, everything doesn't need to, to match perfectly. Feel free to experiment and try out different things. When I move on to texturing, I hide all unnecessary elements and I start with the basic grass material. Basically, all of my textures are from Quixel Megascans. To adjust the, the texture properly, I need to apply the scale and also use Smart UV for the entire surface. In this case, I scaled the texture up to about 20 or 30 times, and afterwards I just set up a basic lighting to see how the texture would look. To achieve a more realistic result with the textures, I make some smaller adjustments. Typically, I only use the color and displacement maps. And next, I set the roughness to 1 and tweak the specular value. Finally, I adjust the displacement value, which helps highlight details and simulates somehow a 3D effect. I always keep my texture setting on pump only. The texture doesn't need to be perfect since we'll be layering grass, shrubs and trees on top. To achieve a smooth transition between the grass and uh, the gravel, I'm using a method I learned from another tutorial. I don't know the name of the creator right now. But you basically select an object, in my case it's a sphere, as a reference. By moving, rotating and scaling it, uh, I can easily control the texture transition. Once I finish texturing the landscape, I create a fairly minimalistic water shader. There are countless better versions available on YouTube if you want to explore more options. As you can see in the image, I've used a variety of rocks, boulders, debris, trees, shrubs and grass. Um, and to keep everything organized, I'll import assets into my scene 
and structure them using folders. I got some of my trees from CG Trader and also created a few myself in Speedtree. But if you don't want to spend money on trees, there are many websites that offer free trees or free assets at all um, that you can download. For most of the other assets, I used Quixel Bridge. All available assets are currently for free, but unfortunately, this will only last till next year. Once everything is ready, I'll duplicate objects and place them on my surface to blend nicely with the gravel. I make sure there are no large empty spaces. Most of the time I do this based on just intuition. To add a variety to the scene and avoid everything looking like it was made with Ctrl C and Ctrl V, you can rotate, scale and deform the assets. Make sure that you duplicate them and not copy paste them that will help you keep the data load manageable. For scattering, I use the add-on Geoscatter, which I find extremely helpful. However, this add-on is not free. And if you prefer not to spend any money, there are countless alternatives available. I highly recommend Covingsworth tutorial where he demonstrates how to easily create your own foliage system with the help of geometry nodes. To start off, I've divided the different layers into three categories and mapped them accordingly using the white map. Starting from large to small. First, I set up the trees with two system, one for the larger major trees and another for the smaller and younger ones. Next, I added drops, which I placed along the forest edge. At the end, I covered the remaining open areas with grass. I choose various grass types to create a nice variation between dry and healthy patches. Once everything is in place, I make individual adjustments to each system to ensure everything aligns properly. I also decide to add another scatter system with stones between the water and the grass. This helps me cover the remaining gravel texture and adds more variation to the scene. I'm almost done now. To finish up, I'm going to add a simple atmosphere. You can create this using a cube and scale it up that it covers all of your landscape. For the material, you have two options, volume scatter or principled volume. Depending on the scene, one might work better than the other. It's definitely worth experimenting with the settings. I also added a plane as an image, which serves me as a sky. Here I recommend trying out different images as well. For the texture, it's pretty simple. Connect the color output to the emission and set the brightness to around 1. To make sure your plane doesn't cast any shadows in your scene, go into the visibility settings and uncheck shadows. For a smooth transition between the foreground and the background, the mountains, I use the plane and put on some trees. In Photoshop I made some light color corrections and adjusted the brightness and contrast. And yeah, that's how I created the image. I want to thank you all for watching and I would love to hear your feedback on my tutorial. Feel free to let me know if I should dive deeper into the details or if this overview was enough.